Brain stimulation techniques are any methods used to alter the brain's trajectory in one way or another. The most common brain stimulation techniques are our sensory system, such as hearing, seeing, smelling, touching, etc. In our daily lives, for example, all of the stimulation that we receive from the outside world through our sensory system influences our behavior, our actions, our mind, our decisions, and so forth. As an example, we may wake up one day feeling very neutral until we hear something or see something or smell something that then in turn can change our behavior, our action, our decisions based on that stimulation. So all of these are the external stimulations that we are being influenced by on a daily basis. And these mood changes that happen, let's say because of the outside stimuli, do impact our brains at the neurons as well as at the brain waves level, both at the chemical as well as at the electrical current activity level. The next set of brain stimulation techniques are the actual devices that exist today in the current market where they are designed to deliberately bring forth electrical impulses and electrical activities to the scalp of the brain. Some of these more shallow inserted electrical activities, devices, um, are at the professional level where healthcare professionals use them on their patients and some of them are available in the market at the retail and hobby level. I have one of those hobby levels that I may share with you in the future if you like. And what these shallow brain stimulation devices do essentially is to bring forth electrical pulses, electrical activities to add electrical current to the scalp of the um, individual to help stimulate, for example, um, extra brain waves or extra neuro neuronal activities. Obviously, these devices are non-invasive, meaning to say that you don't have to poke a hole in somebody's brain, but you can just put the um, electrodes, for example, on the scalp of the brain. So no surgery is needed and they are very non-invasive, but it also means to say that they cannot really penetrate into deep layers of the brain. You can only manipulate these electrical currents at the surface and scalp of the brain. While these devices do brain stimulation at the electrical level, we also have, of course, brain stimulation at the chemical level, and that is when um, medical drugs come in, of course, also other drugs. These are all um, stimulating um, brain uh, waves at different frequencies, as well as the um, cellular or the neuron level changes. Um, because anytime you stimulate the brain at the chemical and or electrical level, that is when you deliberately are stimulating the, your neurons and your brain waves. And from time to time, we get additional startups that come up with um, solutions where these non-invasive devices can insert electrical activities to the brain to help, for example, treat um, depression or um, sleep disorders, etc. Um, some of which are FDA approved and some of them are still going through. That. And then we also have a group of techniques where um, these stimulation are brought into the brain at a much deeper level. And this is when um, you implant the electrical impulses and devices, very small ones, into the uh, brain of the patient. Obviously, these are very invasive treatments and they do need elaborate healthcare professional working on them. Essentially, what happens is that the patient needs to go through several surgical procedures 
um, because these need to be implanted on specific um, sections and regions of the brain. And obviously, the um, whole process is extremely elaborate. Insurance is involved, um, surgers, surgeons are involved, and obviously, uh, many medical professionals are involved. Uh, but these turn out to be great treatments for, for example, Parkinson's disease, um, uh, Alzheimer, even sleep disorders, or even eating disorders, uh, where you insert uh, on purpose uh, electrical current to specific regions of the brain that are being studied and identified in advance, uh, where these electrical currents make sure that there are additional activities in that specific region of the brain with those specific neurons. Obviously, these very invasive treatments have pros and cons. Pros are such that um, these are it turn out to be extremely successful uh, procedures and treatments for these patients. But on the other hand, because they are very invasive, they could also go wrong. So patients go, could go into coma or um, get a, have a stroke, etc. Uh, but obviously, um, these patients go through years of treatments and um, interaction with these medical professionals. So um, these are not just something that like you and I can go through. Um, these are very elaborate processes. Bottom line is that while we have internal, biological, um, electrical, as well as chemical reactions in our bodies, we are born with them. And if we are healthy, um, these are miraculous chemical and electrical reactions happening in our brain at the neuron level, as well as at the brain waves level, and also in all the rest of our organs. Uh, bottom line is that anything can stimulate these chemical as well as electrical reactions, be it from the superficial level, from the outside stimuli. Let's say we watch a TV show or we have an argument with somebody. All these change the trajectory of our brains and our bodies to some extent both at the chemical level, but also the electrical level. And then on the other hand, we have the artificial way to change these electrical and chemical reactions. Artificially meaning to say, if it's chemical is through drugs, and if it's electrical current is through devices, whether these devices are externally non-invasive or invasive and implanted internally. It is safe to say that at any moment in time, we are at least at a superficial level being stimulated by our external world as well as internal world. Our internal world is our belief system, our opinions, anything that we were brought up uh, with. Um, these are the internal stimuli that affect our brain um, and our reactions toward things. Um, both at the physical neuron level as well as at the non-physical brain waves level. And of course, uh, from the outside are the stimuli where we watch TikTok or watch YouTube or talk to people and have meetings and have interaction with our families and bosses and people on the outside. Whatever we do, our brains, more sp specifically our brains, is being stimulated uh, on a daily basis. Again, whether it's from the external world or internal world. And so while some of these brain stimulations are at the deep level, at the medical level for patients with Parkinson's and Alzheimer's diseases, we are still able to do brain stimulation at the very surface level, even for those of us who are healthy, because we can definitely change the trajectory of our minds and our, of our thinking just by deciding what we let in and also what we think about internally.